So the motor's in, the truck is up and running, now it's time to get down to tuning. Stick around. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and as you saw on the live stream or even the short little teaser clip that I threw out there, the truck is running with the new motor in there. It's time to start the tuning process and we're gonna start off right at the beginning idle and startup and literally because we have such an aggressive cam in here and we've lowered the compression ratio on here the thing will start but you really have to pedal it to start it and it gives us indications on what we need to do well part of it being originally it was really rich i had to dial back the fuel and the speed density we're focusing on speed density right now and then i had to adjust the cranking volumetric efficiency more than i would have thought but that tied back to that ve table and hitting cells in that table that we don't normally run under so they're very hard to tune for if you're tuning a section right in here and you're using this section for airflow correlation whenever you're starting up and cranking uh, this section is really hard to get a good reading using even a wide band on there and so we kind of have to ballpark that out but we got through that and got it working and then we can make some adjustments on things like the timing to help get the idle in we're going to take a look at all that now you'll see a lot of people talk about adjusting torque here and there and things like that and we did go in and lower the torque down in the idle range on the virtual torque tables but we're not messing with any of the actual idle torque settings we've talked about those in the past how they can be detrimental and to be honest with you if your virtual torque tables are uh, pretty good you don't need to change those things because they're just kind of an error graph that'll bring you back in now keep in mind this is all going to be fifth gen stuff i've got videos out there for fourth gen and third gen check out tuning101.com that takes you right to our youtube homepage. click the playlist button and then there will be a lot of videos broken down into different generations and topics things like that S search through there that the answer is probably already out there but this is going to be basically step one of the complete walkthrough of getting this truck tuned and instead of doing it the old-fashioned way where i just stick a gopro up and we drive around do a lot of stuff i'm doing a lot of tune changes in fact i've already done about 30 or 40 iterations on this truck already but we're going to go back look at the changes that i've made the results and how we got things dialed in let's go ahead and jump over to the computer okay as you can see i've got our tune pulled up right now and in fact i've got a compare file the tune that is currently on the truck is the active file. The compare file is where we started at. It was step one of the truck. Uh, SD mode, if we go back through and look, we're going to look at a couple things in particular. A big one on a larger cam, more aggressive cam, is going to be the spark table. And we've done a couple things. In particular, we've gone in, if you look at the base uh minimum spark we bump this up to 15. this is a temporary fix this is kind of our idle area we come in here put this as 15 we'll go down to the edge interpolate out to create a smooth transition out of there but this is a temporary spark table to make sure that we're running enough advance because a larger cam is going to like a little more advance on there once we get the uh, all the airflow stuff done we can go back in adjust the torque tables appropriately and then torque requests will actually command the appropriate amount of timing but this as i said gets us by for now you can also see on our base timing uh I didn't change this area. This area has pretty much been the same as it was beforehand, but I did come down in here because of the way our spark air mass is being calculated and extend our 20 degrees of base timing a little bit lower. Uh, not a big ordeal, but also helps to keep us advanced down low at idle. Now, the big thing that we want to look at is our startup, our cranking idle, and in this case, it normally dies off really quick around 46 degrees. By the time you get down to the warm start uh, position, it's only commanding about two degrees of advanced timing on there. And our cam didn't really like that for the warm start. And so what I did was come down to this row right here, the 68 degree row, copy this. Then we go down to 210, paste it in, and then we just interpolate in between the two. And then we also go down a little bit from the 219 and we interpolate down that to once again have smooth transition. 
this table is only active for a couple seconds. Whenever you, you can go in and look that you are requesting crank, and as soon as it breaks about three or 400 RPM, it then kicks over to an idle table. So this is just the initial crank over state, getting that kind of squared away and dialed in. Now, the other thing that I did have to do some adjustments on are going to be our uh, airflow cranking VE. Now, I've got this set to 80, and I worked this down. And, and originally, I didn't think that this was going to have much of an effect. But as I said, if you go in and look at our volumetric efficiency table, here's our VE table that we start out with. This row right here is kind of the VE table that is going to be looking at in order to get your fueling calculations. Well, you can't log data in 400. If you're, if you're idling at 400, you got something wrong. And so we make an educated guess by saying at 600, we're gonna be a little bit higher than we would be at 400 and thus forth at 800. We might dip down to 600 on a healthy cam car. We're gonna be around 800 RPMs. And so we're gonna use that data and we'll bring it back over to the 400 row and we'll take like 20% out for 400 RPMs. Where we can then correct for it is this cranking VE table, which is once again a fifth gen. It's different on this one because this is a percentage of your actual VE table, whereas on earlier generations, this would be a separate VE table in its own right. So as you tuned a VE table, you would have to make adjustments to this one. This one, as I said, is math just being applied to the overall VE table. So it allows us to come in here and make adjustments. I went through this thing and dropped it all the way down to about 40% before I started getting it to the point where the thing would crank without pedaling. Now, that's a good indication that our VE table was quite a bit off. And there were some other reasons in there as far as we had one plug that wasn't firing properly and it was actually putting too much fuel into the bank where we had the uh, wideband at that point in time. Luckily, I caught that on our EGT monitors whenever I saw that one cylinder was significantly cooler than the others. Went through, fixed that, and it brought our fueling back in line. Once we did that, this number came back up from 45 to 80. So we're seeing that the values that are in there at crank with this cam, because it is less efficient at drawing air in at the lower RPMs, that we're only drawing in about 80% of the total air. Now, I have not massaged this thing to the point of being perfect yet. It still struggles a little bit to crank, but once we kind of get the SD table uh, sorted out where we like it, we'll come back in, look at this, and then we'll start adjusting this table down. We don't have to wholesale adjust it like we have where it's, we've just taken it from 10 to 80 across the whole table. Uh, you see that there is a lot of resolution on this every 60 RPMs. Uh, we can target specific areas based on how the cam reacts, but we don't really tend to need to do that. Just by going in and adjusting the whole table, uh, you know, maybe 5% at a time, you're most likely going to find the area where the truck starts to fire better you'll hear a difference whenever you starting whenever you crank the truck over it might the first time crank and you don't really get much fire in there then as you lower this down you might and if you're not getting much fire go full pedal because full pedal is going to choke off the fuel it's going to cut fuel if it fires at fuel pedal full pedal not fuel pedal if it fires at full pedal after trying to crank it once you've got too much fuel in there which means this table is too high so by lowering this, we are actually lowering the amount of fuel that is being injected during cranking. So that is a good indication of using the, the flood clear option on the pedal. Uh, try and crank it. If it doesn't crank, try flood clear. If it cranks on flood clear, you still have much too much fuel. Lower this down until it starts cranking on its own and then keep on going until it actually fires on its own. Uh, always try twice, I've found, because I overshot it once because I would try it the first time and it might have some residual flood in there from the previous try. Uh, and then whenever I would get it running, I would let it run for about 30 to 40 seconds, clear everything out, get the exhaust cleaned out nice and good because I'm still paying attention to my wideband. And then I would try it again to see if it would crank up on the first try. And eventually, we ended up getting the thing to crank up on the first try. 95% of the time, 90% of the time. It always cranks on the second time, but there's still some improvements to be made on this. You have to remember, though, that it is a modified table. And since it is a modifier on your base VE, 
Any changes that we're making to our base uh, virtual volumetric efficiency tables are affecting this in the same way. And so as we fix uh, certain issues on that table, this table then becomes wrong. So this is just kind of an initial, make it easier to get everything up and running table. And then after that, we'll come back in whenever we're finally done with the speed density table and uh, dial this thing in perfectly so we get nice consistent cranks and starts out of it. Now I know what you're thinking, it can't be that easy. It is, trust me. Don't overthink these things. That's what happens to us 99% of the time. We overthink the process, we end up getting off into the weeds, we chase our tail. Keep it simple, stupid. KISS, KISS method, works every time. So what we've gotta do, we just need that fuel, air, spark, verify all three of those, get the fuel and air dialed in properly, and then advance that spark a little bit, and we will touch on it later on as we get into torque tuning, pulling that back out to basically the factory levels as we do our spark tuning and letting the torque tables command that spark at idle. But for now, we're overriding those as we touched on, making sure that we're getting 10, 15 degrees of spark advance at idle, and then also pay attention to where the thing likes to idle. This thing likes it about 900 uh, RPM for a good vacuum. Uh, just go in there, you can advance your RPM, uh, lower it, see where the vacuum falls in at, and then you can play with the timing a couple degrees to see where it's pulling the most vacuum on there. Uh, so it is just trial and error. It took me probably 15 tunes to get this thing where I liked it for now, and we're not done with the startup yet. We are to the point now where we can easily get into speed density tuning, and so that's what we're moving into in the next video. If you have not already subscribed, hit that button down there, ring that bell, go check out the website again once a one, uh, www.tuning101.com. You can also check out goatropegarage.com. Get tuning assistance there through the Patreon. There's a link at the top. Buy cool merch like this. Let people know who's tuning your rig. I've got to get back to it. I've got plenty more tuning to do, plenty more videos of tuning to do. So thanks for stopping by the garage. You know the drill. ABT, always be tuning.